evening, church. It's uh, great to be here with everyone this evening. Uh, we're going to focus on the cross. Uh, this is our time right now. Uh, and to do that, we're going to take a moment to reflect on the cross and hear uh, what Jesus um, had to say about taking part in the sacred act. Um, fortunately, he couldn't be with us personally today, uh, but he's, he's always with us. Amen? Um, so... Uh, and we're going to, and to do that, well, let's let's look over in John chapter 6. We're going to focus over here in John. And verse 53. And now Jesus was addressing a large crowd uh, for this particular passage uh, that had followed him. So in, in verse 53, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the real bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread live forever. Now, there's a lot of ways we could reflect on this passage. And to talk about this today, um, I'm going to tie in BSU football. So, so bear with me, and we're going to see how BSU football ties into communion today. Okay, so now I realize in the Treasure Valley, there's a lot of BSU football fans out there, right? I mean, just, just a few probably. And, and but of those fans, you know, how many people actually follow the Broncos? You know, and let me, you know, I'll explain that. Uh, you know, how many folks, you know, actually would go out of their way to travel to the away games, you know, pay all that money to go on airplanes and tickets and all that, support them in the preseason or, you know, support them in the booster clubs and actually contribute money? Like how many people would actually go out of their way, you know? And be maybe a little bit more than a fan. Now, now God, God totally blessed, uh, um, blessed me for the last home game they had. Uh, we actually got some free tickets uh, on on base. They they usually give out free tickets uh, to one, at least one game a season. Uh, somebody on base gets them and and they distribute them out um, until they're gone. And I actually got to take my mom and my dad to their first. Uh, actually live football game. And I was just honored that they could go see the Broncos. Amen. Um, I don't know how many people went to that, that last home game they had. Anybody go to that last home game? You know, it was, it was I know a couple of folks did it. It was a, actually a pretty cold night. And when you look out in the stands, the stands were almost practically full, despite the weather. So it was, it was a good turnout. But, act, you know, I know looking out at those stands, how many people would actually not be there unless they had maybe a free ticket like myself? <laughs> I'm just I'm just being honest. I mean, I would not go through the money and, and I don't have the time to go and buy, you know, pre like season tickets and and do that that kind of thing. I, it's just it's just not me. I'm just one of those fans that goes when I get free tickets. But you know, God God blessed it. We went and enjoyed the game. Uh, so you know, we can look at BSU fans. And, and follows the same way we look at churchgoers. Okay, so so fans, you know, what's a fan? A fan are folks who, uh, when we're talking about fans of church, they're the ones that just go to church. Okay? Now, do they really do much for Jesus, you know, or do they have other priorities, you know, as fans? Now, they're the fans, you've got those people that go to church, they show up, and and they could encourage. They could be really encouraging there, and and they could cheer, like fans do. They could cheer for Jesus. Go, Jesus, Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, they could sound like fans in the at a football game in the stands, right? You know, and they could do all those things. But there's a difference, okay? There's a difference between a fan and a follower, okay? Fan just shows up. Their stay is long. You know, as as that game is going well, as long as their team is 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 going good, and you know, and they're and they're winning, 
let's say, as long as it benefits them, they're hanging around. But as soon as something happens, maybe as soon as something upsets them or offends them during a game and their team starts getting swamped, let's say there's, there's 10 minutes left in the game and they are losing and there is no way they are coming back. What do those people do? They are out the door. They are gone, headed to their cars. They want to beat the rush, get home. Anybody ever do that? <laughs> beat the rush, you know, before the crowd starts heading out of the arena. You know, the stand, I mean, you know, I've, I've done that. But, you know, you see the fans at any ball game, baseball game, basketball game, doesn't matter, football game, you know, they're at those games and, and that's, that's what happens. You know, when something doesn't go their way, they're gone. They're out the door. They get up and leave. And, you know, let's look over, let's just look um, down to verse 60. John, same chapter. John, verse 6, says, On hearing it, what Jesus had just preached, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? And look uh, down a couple more in verse 66. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. What is up with that? What? They no longer followed him? Why? You know, why did they stop following him? Well, was it because Jesus offended them? Was it because of something he said? Something they didn't like in his message? Maybe? Maybe they were pushed beyond their comfort zone. So they left and they didn't come back. You see, a crowd, a crowd wasn't there to follow Jesus. They were really weren't there for him at all. Uh, they were just there because they expected to, Jesus to do something for them. Now, keep in mind what what had just happened in previous passages in John, and and how Jesus fed the five thousand, and you know, five thousand men brought their women and children with them. And what did he do? He broke. He broke the five loaves and the two fish and distributed out among all those people and performed that miracle. And everybody was fed. And I'm sure they were pretty excited about that miracle. Uh, they, then they went searching for Jesus. Why? Because, well, because he fed them, probably. And, and they, they got a free lunch out of the deal. Um, unfortunately, a lot... You know, that's what happens a lot of time. We, we can think with other, um, other intentions. And Jesus had no intention of feeding them this time around. So they came back for more food, but there was no free lunch buffet. I mean, I, mean, I, I would follow somebody if, if they offered a free lunch every time everybody got together. I mean, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Um, you know, I know I'm not going to go hungry, but they're, they're not happy about that. They want him to do another miracle, but he's not going to do it. Well, why isn't Jesus going to do another miracle for him? He doesn't want fans. He doesn't want fans. He wants followers. Fans give up, walk away. Followers will stay till the end and follow Jesus no matter where he leads us. You know, if, if the game's going to, if it's going to start losing, he... They're not going to walk away. They're going to continue following just because it's a uh, because the weather changes. You know, a follower doesn't just come to church. They get involved. They get invested. They give back in the fellowship and do things that advance God's mission, His kingdom. See the difference between fans and followers is how you can see that difference in how they worship. Also, fans go to church to experience these rituals, and the rituals make them feel religious. But the rituals don't make any difference in how they live. You know, the followers go to church to experience Jesus, and that experience of touching Jesus during worship changes them. That experience makes and molds them into a different kind of person. And the worship, they worship with the full expectation that that experience is going to change them. For fans, the spiritual connotations of worship might be hard to grasp. Uh, again, in verse 53, you know, Jesus, when he was speaking to them, the first thing he said, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Even Sometimes when we hear this, even when I hear this sometimes and I read it, 
and it could be it could be a little bizarre and i could think well oh yeah oh yeah he doesn't really mean literally <laughs> sometimes i have to remind myself that and and but we could think we could think the same thing sometimes if we're reading the some of the scriptures literally but he's speaking spiritual words filled with spiritual truth and jesus taught this way many times in his ministry uh you know there's another there's tons of passages out there but another one says if you sin you know if your eye causes you to sin pluck out your eye or if your hand causes you to sin pluck cut off your hand well if we took those passages literally there'd be a lot of us there will be a lot of hurting individuals out there with that are blind and that don't have any hands um that wouldn't be too good uh so jesus wasn't speaking literally uh yeah, but everybody you know jesus isn't talking in this passage literally about eating his flesh and drinking his blood he's referring to the fact that soon he's going to be on the cross and when that happens his flesh is going to be torn and his blood is going to flow for the forgiveness of our sins um, for communion this isn't about communion. it's this is about us having life because jesus did what he did and we find our nourishment as christians because we feed on his sacrifice we're not here to go through a ritualistic ceremony. We're not here to fulfill a quota of religious activities. We're here to feed on Jesus. A Jesus who died for us and was buried and rose from the grave. This is why communion is placed right in the middle, I believe, of our worship service. And this is why we take the Lord's Supper each Sunday. Not because it's some ritualistic requirement and we're checking off a box. It's because we need to remember why we're here. Without the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, nothing else we do here is going to be it's not going to be worthwhile. It's not going to be worth anything. That bre the bread and the cup are the only reminders of that truth. So let's resist the temptation to be fans of Christ and be followers. Jesus desires us to be as we take the the, cup, the bread and the cup today and as we go to God in prayer.